Hi guys, welcome back to Vitaly Style. Today I'm doing a tried and true review on the Revlon Age Defining Firming and Lifting Foundation and Concealer. I showed this in a recent haul and I had a ton of people ask for a review on it. So today I'm doing a demo and review so you can see it, how it applies onto the face and my final thoughts on it at the very end. Now keep in mind that I already have my eyebrows and my eye makeup done in this video, but I will list everything I'm wearing on my face down in the down bar. For my eyeshadow, I'm using the Naked 3 because I'm testing out some looks to do uh, for a review and demo for you in a couple of days. So I hope that you find this video interesting. Let me know if you did and let's go on and get started with the demo. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is because this is what I do with any foundation is use my Armani corrector in number two and I smile every time I see it because it was recommended by all of you and it has completely changed my makeup life. So I thank you for that. I'm just going to blend that in with my finger like, like my fingers like I normally would. Now I'm going in with a primer and the primer I found works best for this and again I will do a bit more in the review at the end to talk about a bit more is my Holy Grail which is a Tarte Clean Slate Poreless 12 hour primer and I'm going to pop that onto each side of the face, a little bit on the forehead and a tiny bit on the chin and then just blend that in and I always blend my primers in with my fingers because the warmth of your hands really melt the primer into the skin like fills into the pores better. For my foundation, I am using the Revlon Age Defying Firming Lifting in the color I have it in is 30 Soft Beige. Now, I've tried a lot of different colors and this one worked best for me, so um, you're going to have to let me know what you think. I'm hoping it's not too pink and it's not too yellow. I think it's good, but you never know. So, I'm just going to pop that on. I'm just going to blend it in with my Real Techniques um, oops, Expert Face Brush. Okay, I like to just at the very end go in and pat it all into place. Okay, now for concealer time. I am using the Revlon Age Defying Concealer and the color I have it in is light medium. It's got like a little sponge top here, but what I like to do is I like to take it on my finger and dab it under my eyes. And then I like to buff it in with the same Real Techniques brush because it kind of works for both things. It's one of the reasons why I love this brush. Okay, now what I'm going to do, because I would do this with any other concealer, is I'm going to set my concealer with my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. Whoops, here it is, I'm grabbing something else. And then I'm just going to pop that right under my eyes. And now, because I feel like this foundation is just a little tiny bit too shiny right in this area, I'm going to set that ever so lightly with the powder and the powder closest to me right now is my Laura, my Laura Geller Balance and Brighten uh, in Medium. Technically this is a foundation but I don't use it really heavily. I just take a big fluffy brush, tap it, tap it all out and then just go right on the T-zone. And also while I have you here, I might as well show you how I use this Maybelline Master Highlight Highlighting Blush. Now this is definitely not a blush for me. It's not pigmented enough to be a blush and it's not pigmented enough to be a highlighter either. So what I would suggest if you do pick this up and decide to keep it is to apply it over the top of like a matte uh, blush like I'm doing today. Just put that right over my blush just to give it a little bit of a shine, a little bit of a sheen. If you um, didn't want to, you know, go ahead and uh, wear a matte blush. Okay, so my makeup is fully done and now we can talk a little bit about my thoughts and a little bit of maybe the pros and cons of the foundation and concealer. First thing I have to say that I wish Revlon or every brand made the foundations, like, for example, in the Revlon Color Stay, I'm in the color 250 Beige. What is this? Right now, I'm in the color 250 Fresh Beige. I just wish that all Revlon colors were like 250 Fresh Beige would be the same. Do you get what I'm saying? Like I wish this was 250 Fresh Beige as well. That way I knew for a fact that it would be the same color because finding a color that matches is really frustrating in the drugstore because there are no testers and you can't, I mean, you can open them up and try them if you want to, but I prefer not to. So this is my third bottle and finally found a match. This is the thing that it doesn't, I wish it was a little bit warmer, but um, I think it, it matches perfectly. Uh, anything else was too pink for me, but this matches really, really well, so I'm happy with this. And then for the concealer, same thing. It's really hard to see like what 
you know, what the color selection, what, what color you are. So the first thing I have to mention is how I've tried this foundation and this is my one, two, fourth time wearing this foundation. So I feel like I can give you like really good, um, you know, some really good information. The first time I wore it was using my MAC Prep and Prime Skin Base as my primer. And I definitely didn't like the finish of this because this is kind of on the luminous side and so is the foundation. So the two together was way too much luminosity, too much glow. Um, and I didn't think this really made it last a whole lot in my opinion. The second time I tried it, which I really liked, was with the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. Now, the reason why I liked it is because this really fills in my pores well and makes the foundation kind of glide on beautifully. But the reason why I think the best is the Tarte Clean Slate Poreless, in my opinion, and the best out of the three I've tried, is because this kind of does the same thing as this, where it fills everything and it keeps every, you know, makes everything nice and smooth, but this just gives you longer lasting power. You know, it's, it makes the makeup stay on a little bit longer, which is why I decided to go ahead and demo it for you using this primer. Now, the thing that I love about this foundation is the coverage. It is medium to full coverage. I mean, I didn't put a lot on and I definitely feel like I have medium to full coverage. I love the way it looks. I love the finish. It's not super dewy like the L'Oreal True Match Lumi. This for me, I can only use this for a couple of hours at a time before I start to feel too oily and before my makeup starts to run all over my face. This is what this does. This is beautiful for a couple of hours, but no more than that. And I find that with any luminous finish foundation, I can keep them on for max five to six hours. Like for example, my NARS Sheer Glow is a beautiful foundation, but any more than between four to five hours, I gotta take it off because it starts to really break down. But this, I find that this lasts a good eight hours on my face. You know, in an office environment, you know, in, in, in a normal environment, I think this will last eight to 10 hours beautifully. Now, I was in New York yesterday and decided to wear this and see really how it held up because it was windy, it was cold, it was rainy, and we were walking around outside a lot to get from point A to point B, and I really wanted to see how it held up. And I was pleasantly surprised that it held up a lot better than I thought it was going to, but by the time I got in the car, I could really see that it had broken down in a lot of places, my blush was gone, but it really is no fault to this foundation. It's the fact that it was just really windy. I don't think any foundation could really withstand that. I mean, it was getting wet and it was just a mess. So I have to say that this held up a lot better than I thought it was going to. The only downside for me, I have to say, is that I think even though this is a beautiful finish, I have to still set it with a powder. And that's for someone who has meat, uh, normal to dry skin. So if I don't set it with a powder, I definitely start to feel a little bit tacky here, you know, right in the T-zone. I feel like it tends to get a little bit tacky. So I definitely think, I definitely suggest setting it with a powder just to ensure that nothing's gonna look too sort of unnaturally glowy. And when it looks unnaturally glowy, I think it tends to look greasy and you don't want that. So that is like the one downfall to this. But I have to say, this is right up there with my Revlon Color Stay and my Estee Lauder Double Wear, which are two foundations I absolutely love. But the thing about this that makes it even better is that it's got a little bit of luminosity to it. Now it's not as long wearing, it's my Estee Lauder Double Wear. And I feel like the Estee Lauder Double Wear is a little heavier coverage because it is a matte finish foundation. So that's normal. Uh, but this is just right up there. I'm incredibly impressed. I couldn't believe it when I tried this on for the first couple times. I was like, really? This, this is really it's beautiful. And I also want to mention that the true test to any foundation is how it holds up if I film Laurie in the kitchen wearing it. And I will say that I filmed uh, Laurie in the kitchen today, uh, not today, a couple days ago, and I wore this. Uh, for I didn't I didn't shoot for as normally as long as I do. I normally film for a lot longer, but this held up for a couple of uh, for three hours, and that's in front of really hot lights, and it gets hot really really quickly, and it held up pretty pretty good. I did have to blot right in my T zone, but that's absolutely normal no matter what foundation. Estee Lauder Double Wear, Revlon Color Stay, Kat Von D. I have to blot because it just gets really really hot. So this is definitely a go for me. True and tried absolutely love it. I'm just thrilled. So now for the concealer. 
I have to say that this is probably going to go back for me. I'm not going to keep it because it was around $12 and I think that that's a little bit outrageous for a concealer, a uh, drugstore concealer. And the thing I don't like about, I do like the color, the uh, light medium. I feel like it's a really nice color. It's not going to want to highlight, but it's a really good color. But what I don't like is the fact that this really settles into my fine lines because I think it's a little bit on the thicker side. And it's a little bit drying of a formula. It's not as thin as my Maybelline Instant Age Rewind or is my NARS Custard Concealer or even like my MAC Pro Longwear. That's a little bit thicker but doesn't set on to fine lines and wrinkles like this does. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to really get in your face now because I want you to see I just put this on and you can really still mind my eyebrows I'm letting them grow out and it's horrible. And you could really see it settle right into my wrinkles and you can really see if I get really up close, you can see definitely the settling into fine lines. And I just put this on. Oops. So I have to admit that this is only the second time I've worn this because after I wore this the first time, I just, I didn't want to wear it again. So this is definitely going back for me. If you have normal to dry skin, this is not for you. If you have someone with really oily skin, then this might actually really work for you. And also if you are someone with oily skin, then this might not work for you. I don't think this will work for you at all because this has got too much of a glow and it'll make you look, you won't like it. I, that's all I'm going to say my opinion of course but if you have normal to dry skin this is a go so the end result for me this is an absolutely love 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 new holy grail status i know i can't believe it and the age defined is going back um it just didn't do anything for me now for the maybelline master highlight uh highlighting blush this is not bright enough to be a blush and it's not good bright enough to be a highlight but it is pretty over top of a matte blush if you wanted to give yourself a little bit of a glow I think this is really good but for 10 bucks you have to really think about it is it really worth the $10 price point that this is um, that this is costing you so it's really up to you for me I might keep it because I do like it over top of a matte blush but it's just nothing special so I don't know I'm still debating over this it's nothing exciting i will not purchase it i would not definitely not repurchase any other colors so that is my thought on that i hope that this has helped, been helpful for you also let me know how you like my true and tried reviews because you know i like to really test the product out a lot before i go ahead and do a review on it and uh, if you like this this video i would love to bring it I, I would love to make it a series and maybe bring you a bonus video every week and right now i'm doing every other day uploaded on this channel so if you like the reviews and i could definitely maybe do a um, review on sunday or on saturday or just like make it a weekly thing that way you can expect a review from me on that day if that's something you're interested in please thumbs up this video and let me know in the comment section below and whatever products you do want to see me review because i would love to be your guinea pig <laughs> Hope you enjoyed spending time with me, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.